from Enid. I am Diana Hernandez, communication assistant for the city of Enid, and welcome to another city update. With me is assistant city manager Scott Morris. How are we doing? Always good to be on the show with you. It's always good to have you. Yeah. Love it. All right, so let's jump into updates on eco economic development. What have you heard about the hotel downtown? A lot of good progress on the hotel downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, as if you drive by, you can see they're working on sidewalks. They're trying to get the sidewalks finished up. There, there are people working all over that building. Um, I can tell you, I think on the fourth floor, they're, they're starting to have completed rooms and start, um, I think they're actually bringing furniture up there and mm -hmm. starting on the fourth floor. They've got a, a lot of construction still on the first floor and they're making a lot of progress very quickly. Uh, we can't make any promises, but the city of Enid might have a good Christmas present coming. And when, you, and when you say Christmas present, does that mean finished hotel? There's a possibility. There are no promises. Awesome. Now, the ice rink. The ice rink is going to be coming in November, and it's supposed to be throughout the end of the year. Um, any new updates or developments that you are aware of in that area? Still on track. Um, should be starting around November 20th. It'll be a fantastic uh, outdoor holiday event for families, especially during the time of year where um, some of the indoor activities that we want to do, they might not be available or people might want to be doing something different because of COVID, but this will be a fantastic um, time to be outside and just enjoy um, around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, you know, mm -hmm. New Year's, just all of the, the fun things that are going on. Uh, I know they're going to be selling tickets individually and then they are also going to put out things to like um, youth activities of uh, schools churches where you can you know have some packages and and uh, you know book some times just for your group so I'm sure there's some information on the screen a phone number there where you can get a hold of uh, someone and book what you need now a neat thing also that's happening downtown is the crosswalk art that um, started this Saturday. So they had closed off East Cherokee and Grand. When is that area going to be back open to through traffic? Well, that painting process, it does um, require like a, a special sealant to be put on the paint and then they put something over that and then that takes a sealant. And so I think uh, tomorrow evening, there's some pictures of it right there. It's really cool. Tomorrow evening sometime, um, that road should be back open to the public. And then there are three more of these crosswalks planned throughout downtown. And just so, um, I've seen it on a, on a Facebook post that we've had in the past where people thought this is a terrible misuse of city funds. You know, why would we be doing a project like this? Well, I just want to remind people this was actually some, a, a grant that was submitted. Um, I think Main Street Enid had something to do with submitting that grant. Mm -hmm. And so it's grant money. Mm -hmm. that's not city funds that are coming in to help our downtown just you know have a different look and create some excitement and um, this is definitely an appropriate area right in between uh, the David Allen Memorial Ballpark there's at least three other locations I off the top of my head there's one going from around where the new hotel is over towards Enid Brewery mm -hmm. and there should be another one going up um, in between Callahan's and um, Gaslight Theater and I forgot where the fourth location is but there's a fourth location in downtown as well it's gonna that, be amazing that is pretty neat I got the privilege to speak to Jack Morgan who is the designer uh, the artist uh, of these um, crosswalk art that are being put out and he also had input on where to put it so it's really neat and uh, it was an AARP grant Mm -hmm. that the, uh, Main Street did apply for and they got. And so they sent out a word to local mural artists to kind of submit um, any ideas that they would have. And it was Jack Morgan who um, kind of won that slot. And so he's given a lot of input and his, his crew was out there. And so it was really neat because it was also open to the public, whoever wanted to come join and help uh, partake in it. So it's like a really neat community thing and it does make Enid a lot more vibrant, so that's really neat. I agree. All right, now let's go back up to updates. And so the city of Enid is always hiring, and the neat thing is the fire department is going to be um, 
looking to hiring someone or opening up some testing. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, my, my brother happens to be a captain on the fire department. Nice. So shout out to my brother Mark. Um, but what the fire department does is that whenever they have vacancies they need to fill, what they'll do is they'll offer these tests and people will come out and, and take a physical test. They'll usually take some type of a written test and have an interview process. Um, they, they keep that list and as they need applicants they go back to the list and so if you're interested in being a, a firefighter for the city of Enid um, go ahead and go ahead and um, apply for that and go through the testing and we'll use um, they'll use that testing for you know a, a long period of time so if there are six or eight people that are good qualified applicants on there that it may take them six months to hire three or four of them but they keep that list going until they need to until they need to do it again so I just recommend if you're interested now's the time don't wait because it if even if they do even if you do well on the test it could be months before um, before you are hired awesome also hiring is utility maintenance field operator water production maintenance and production technician and police officer so we have a lot of opportunities for individuals who are looking for um, to join the awesome team of City of Enid, because we're awesome. That's right. There are several of these um, uh, positions that are in the, the water field, water production and mm -hmm. utility maintenance. And these are hard-working jobs, but they're, it's, it is a, it's rewarding to work mm -hmm. for the City of Enid. We have outstanding health benefits. We have outstanding retirement benefits. And, uh, you know, just starting a job, getting your foot in the door, there's a lot of different things we do in the city of Enid, and if, if you do well at one thing, there's um, opportunity to transfer to another department, and the city of Enid is a great place to work for. So if you need a job, we've got some. I agree. Awesome. Next, Halloween um, celebration guidelines or recommendations by the city of Enid. Would you like to share those? Sure. Um, you know, every year we get asked sometimes, hey, are we having Halloween? Well. Yes, we're having Halloween. The city doesn't dictate whether or not you have Halloween, but um, you know we do. We do. We did put out a press release, and we're asking residents to consider some safer alternatives to Halloween, where maybe you only go trick or treating with family members instead of you know a whole bunch of kids in a group. Um, carry hand sanitizer with you. Uh, wear some face masks that don't obstruct your vision. Um, there's a PSA that's out on this that you can watch that's really good, uh, Police Officer's Guide. It's got spooky music in the background, but um, there's just a lot of suggestions. Maybe you have a movie night with family members. A lot of uh, churches or other organizations have um, a safe way where there's some distancing and have some you know, parking lot type activities that you can do. So there's just a lot of different ways that you can try to approach Halloween a little differently this year. So that's just a... That's just a uh, something that we put out there to, to ask people to consider. Right, and uh, there was also a neat PSA that came out with these uh, recommendations, uh, safety tips for parents with children. And if you want to go to City of Enid government, you can see that PSA. So it's kind of fun to uh, look at it from a very unique perspective, but it's very informative for parents who are wondering how to venture into the waters of this Halloween um, with COVID. All right, next upcoming is the car seat checkup event. So the fire department is going to be holding a car seat checkup event. So parents, this event is going to be Friday, October 30th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So if you have any questions about how, um, when to make the transition from uh, a certain car seat to a booster seat. Uh, I know I have those questions. So um, it is a really neat event that the fire department will be holding October the 30th. Do you want to share any thoughts about this? I think the information is all there. Yeah. If, you, if you've got questions about car seats, go get your questions answered. Uh, they can be more difficult than they appear sometimes and you want to make sure you get it right. So. Alrighty, now upcoming commission meeting. I know um, it feels like it's been a while since we had a commission meeting. What is going to be in our in the agenda for our upcoming study session and commission meeting? All right. Yes, it has been a while. It's been since the middle of September since we've had our last last meeting. 
Uh, we're going to have a full study session. So here are some of the things. There's an update to our streets program. Mm -hmm. That's a question that we get a lot. Uh, what are we doing with streets in Enid? Obviously, if you drive around, there's a lot of streets that need our attention. And when we come up with a program to try to determine which streets need to be repaired, you could pick out a lot of different streets. And so there's a methodology that we use. And uh, on this study session, we're going to have a five-year plan of which streets that we would like to, to work on. Now, depending on deterioration or other factors, you know, that list could be moved around, but we, we need to have a plan and start from somewhere. And so this study session is going to focus on where are we going to be in the next five years, what streets need to be repaired, and how we're going to fund it, you know, it'll, so it'll go through all of those different things about what streets and what the locations and how much it costs. Then uh, we've got an update on the skate park. I just drove by the skate park on the way here. Mm -hmm and the contractors are out working on it today. They've got some track hose in there and they're digging down the areas where the bowls will be. Yeah. And so they're doing work on the ground and uh, that is set to be finished by December the 4th. And so before Christmas, Enid will have a new skate park. That would be a Christmas yeah. present for sure for That'd a lot of That'd be a great skaters. Christmas present, yeah. So the, the other thing, um, they'll be discussing the big water line break. You know, if you've watch the show or watched any of our updates, you know, we've had a lot of updating on it because you know, that is the main source of water coming into Enid, that 30 inch pipeline from Ames, uh, probably delivers about 75% of our community's water. And, you know, several weeks ago it was damaged and it was, it was repaired and then it took several days even after the repair to build up the pressure that we need um, to supply all of the dif different areas of Enid. I know for a fact that some people in in the north part of Enid that were getting water from the water tower uh, on the north side mm -hmm. of Enid. It took a while for that water tower to get repressured and so some of those people had low pressure for a while and everything's back to normal but it was just a giant effort to get it fixed. It was a lot of coordination. Luck and Bill was out there. We even had uh, one of our commercial industrial partners, Coke Industries. Mm -hmm. They even brought out an extra pump for us to use during that wow. time and so it was a community effort really um, between those two companies and our utility maintenance department, public utilities uh, division, just to get out there and figure out what needed to be done. In the process, we actually, um, we actually changed out some really big valves that we needed to change out, and we learned a little bit about pumping all of the water from, uh, from plant number two, which will be similar to what we're going to be doing um, when, um, when Call Lake finish, finishes up. So all of the all of the water will be pumped out of state out of uh, station two, whenever Call Lake goes online. And so that was a good learning experience for them, and it also just demonstrates the need that maybe we really do need Call Lake. We really do need an additional source of water into Enid. And so we learned a lot from that. We'll talk about all that, and then there's a an elevate Enid committees that we're going to talk about. And there's a group of different people that have ideas for downtown, ideas for quality of life issues and things like that. So there are going to be some committees that get together and, and, and form this group. People get together to form the committees and, uh, and get going on that. That's all we have for the study session. And then the main meeting, um, it's got several things in it, but really, really it's uh, mostly consent items. It ought to be a fairly quick meeting that goes through. There are just a few things that I'll bring up. Um, the uh, police department is buying 12 new Explorer patrol vehicles. So that's happening. That'll be nice uh, improvement for our police department. Uh, we're approving a, a, an agreement we have with the jail. Um, so as you know, or as you may not know, um, the Enid Police Department does not have its own jail. We utilize the Garfield County Jail. Mm -hmm. And so we have an agreement between Garfield County and Enid Police Department. And so that's the approval of that. And then on 5.4, this is kind of, it doesn't look like much on there, but what it is is um, it's a lot of infrastructure for our radio and wireless communication in Enid, mm -hmm. which will help uh, stoplights communicate with one another better. And it is also the same infrastructure that we use when uh, water meters are red and that information needs to get back to um, the administration building, all the servers. And so uh, we're upgrading a lot of that 
radio and Wi-Fi equipment, so that is what um, 0.5.4 is. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up is under EMA in 8.1, uh, there's a repair of a wood chipper at the landfill. So if you've ever been out to the landfill, um, there's this giant place where you can take all your brush and limbs, um, and we have a chipper there where we we turn all that brush into wood chips. And that can be, people can come on, pick, pick, pick them up um, to use it as mulch or other things like that. But we use it a lot at the landfill when um, we need to put something up on top when it's muddy to get traction and trash trucks get stuck and it just it breaks down the material so much smaller um, it's it's great so um, our um, solid waste supervisor filled out a grant request to DEQ and got a grant for almost fifty thousand dollars to repair this main belt drive on the wood chipper and we got it and so this is an item that says we can spend up to $65,000, but really we have a grant for almost every penny that we need to replace on that machine. And so that's a great work by the solid waste supervisor and thanks to DEQ. But if you uh, go out to the landfill, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's, uh, it's in an area just, just to the west of the entrance uh, there. But that's pretty well the, the most of what's going on on the meeting. There's no executive session, so you're welcome to come join us. The study session's at 5 o'clock at the Stride Bank Center, and the main meeting starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. All right, awesome. Now, I want to go back to a topic that I overlooked at the weekly report. So all the awesome things that the departments at the City of Enid do behind the scenes, and I think it's really nice to give them a shout out in Public Works. Now we we did discuss a little bit about there was a crosswalk art project that started downtown Enid at, at the intersection of East Cherokee and Grand. If you can see um, Public Works, um, stormwater and roadway maintenance crews, uh, sandblasting the crosswalk near David Allen Memorial Ballpark prep uh, in preparation of fresh paint and then if you can scroll down a little bit, uh, parks and recreation, uh, crews installing electrical lines at Metal Lake uh, Park. So you see that all that work. And so it, this is just just a little bit of uh, the neat things that these these guys do. So it, it's it's a lot more than than people realize. And I know it's a lot more than I've ever realized. So it's really neat. And I just like to give them a little shout out and so two technical services crews completing repairs to a tower antenna so you see the height of that and they, these are our IT personnel and they are not scared of heights so shout out to them and fleet management if you scroll down a little bit you'll see crews making repairs on trash truck in a city's fleet so it's really neat to see that um, fleet management are really skilled and I don't know how to make repairs on, on anything. Yeah, and especially trash trucks. Nobody likes to work on a trash I know, truck. I know. <laughs> and, uh, but it's really, because it's, it's needed. It's necessary. It's, yes. not, it's not something that, you know, we can do without. And going down, public utilities, uh, solid waste services. And we see here solid waste completed road construction at the landfill. So this was really neat because uh, I ran a marathon, virtual, uh, the OKC Virtual Memorial Marathon, and I ran uh, by the, the landfill, and I saw a lot of work being done there, and I was wondering, I wonder what was going on there. There was a lot of people on deck working, and it's really neat to see that this is what was being done. That picture that's on the screen now, what you're looking at is that, that there's a little section of dirt on that's the, the entrance to that uh, road on the on the west side, and mm -hmm. they, they put new concrete in there. That is the the commercial scale lane, and now that's all concrete from the entrance all the way to the scale. That really helps. Um, it really helps it to have a smooth ride, and it helps um, helps all the. It just makes it a lot better than it was before. But and you can see in the background there, I was talking about the all of the wood chips. Um, that's where that is. That area of the landfill there's some rows whenever the green carts are picked up there's some rows in front of that even where um, where your grass is put and then okay. they have a 
compost machine that goes into that area mm. and turns that into compost. Currently, we do not have any compost. So if you need compost, we're out of it right now. Uh, but we do have wood chips if you need wood chips. That's good to know. <laughs> I didn't realize that. All right, and then scroll down a little bit lower. This is um, the water production theme. So rump pitch for the week was 52,241,760 gallons of water. And water production worked to keep water levels under control after the main water line was hit. And so I was able to go out there and see firsthand um, right when this uh, the water line was hit and it was big <laughs> it was and it was a huge team effort so it was really neat to see everyone all hands on deck um, working together to get this fixed for the residents of Eden so it was really neat yeah great job mm -hmm. great job to all that were involved mm -hmm. all right and we go to the last Page utility maintenance replace fire hydrant on Oxford and Van Buren and this is one of the many things that utility maintenance does and so if you've ever wondered how it looks underneath a fire hydrant that's how it looks like I know I have and kudos to the departments of the city of Enid of course these are not all the departments of the city of Enid who are working for residents day in and day out. Um, so it's just a little glimpse of what goes on here. So now we're gonna jump into um, COVID-19, um, a fluid topic that we have talked for months and months about. And with the numbers, total confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Garfield County, 2,236. That's related to COVID-19 in Garfield County, 23. Recovered from COVID-19 in Garfield County, 1,853 active cases in Garfield County, 360. And for the city of Enid, total confirmed cases, 2,056. Deaths, 23. Recovered, 1,710. And active cases in Enid, 323. Do you have any thoughts before we close out? Well, you know, I had a few thoughts. Um, number one, um, you know, our active cases continue to, I guess, plateau. We've mm -hmm. been around that 300 mark for way too long. Yeah. It needs to be going back into the 200s. I would love to say that there's something that, um, if there's some magic button that we could push where we have control over this virus right. and we can, we can uh, make it go back down, but, you know, social distancing and the things that we've been talking about for a long time. Matter of fact, you guys just, made a new PSA on yes. social distancing, didn't you? We did. It's fantastic. Uh, if you haven't watched this little video on social distancing, it's it's quite funny, and it just drives home the point of uh, it, there, there are some things that we can try to do, some social distancing. We can try to be careful about when and where we do things and you know when we are in places where we uh, we don't have control of social distancing. Those are the times where it may be appropriate to wear a mask, especially if a, a business or a, a, an office is asking you to do that. But yeah, that's that's all I really had on the COVID. Um, great video there. And going back, you said you ran a, a full marathon. That's 26 point something miles. Yes, it was the Oklahoma City Virtual Memorial Marathon uh, 2020 this year. And so I actually ran this marathon um, in honor of Salo Flores. And he was a Baptist minister here in Enid who actually passed away from COVID uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so it was um, a hit to the Hispanic community here. And, and Salo Flores was actually a person who actually approached my, my family right when we moved here to Enid about 20 years ago. So it was really neat to um, be able to know him personally and uh, to be able to um, run this marathon in his honor. So it was really That nice. is fantastic. Great job for that. Thank you. I have hiked 20 miles, but I would not try to dare to run 26 miles. So oh, I can't say I ran the whole thing, but I am, um, I'm glad that I was able to complete it. So yeah. Well, very good. Well, do we have any, are there any questions that you know of? No, there are no questions no here. No questions. So, um, uh, again, reiterating everything that you had just said, um, it is Halloween and I know a lot of parents are wanting to take their kids out. Um, um, 
remember the tips. Um, we're at the City of Enid government page. We have a PSA out. We have information out to kind of help parents go through um, Halloween celebrations um, mindfully and how to do it safely, as safe as we can for our children. And uh, as always, um, we're PPE, social distance, be mindful when um, around crowded groups and uh, stay safe overall. And we're good. And you guys have a great week and stay safe. Till next week. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Enid, my name is Officer Tom Moran with the Enid Police Department. We want everybody to have a happy and safe Halloween this year, and we're reminding parents and guardians of the following tips to help keep children safe. Cross the street at the corners, using traffic signals and crosswalks. Look left and right, and then left again when crossing, and keep looking as you cross. Put down the electronic devices and the goodie bags, and keep your head up and walk, don't run across the street. Teach children to make eye contact with drivers before crossing in front of them. Always walk on sidewalks or paths. If there are no sidewalks, walk facing traffic as far to the left as possible. Watch for cars that are turning or backing up and teach children never to dart out into the street or cross between parked cars. Join kids 12 and under for trick-or-treating. If they're mature enough to be without supervision, tell them to stick to familiar areas that are well lit and trick or treat in groups. Okay. We're also asking parents and guardians to ensure each child's costume is safe and visible to drivers. Decorate costumes and bags with reflective tape or stickers, and if possible, choose light colors. Choose face paint and makeup whenever possible, instead of masks, which can obstruct the child's vision. Have kids carry glow sticks or flashlights to help them see and to help them be seen by drivers. Drivers should also take precautions during Halloween. Slow down and be especially alert in residential neighborhoods. Take time to look for kids at intersections, on medians, and on curbs. Enter and exit driveways and alleys slowly and carefully. Get rid of any distractions, like cell phones, in your car so you can concentrate on the road and your surroundings. If everyone takes precautions this year, we can all have a happy and safe Halloween. We just have to decide what silly costume we want to wear. I decided I'm going to be a firefighter.